a really warm welcome to my vegetable plot in the month of June and I'm really excited to take you on a tour to show you the many things that have happened over the last month that have completely transformed the allotment. June is a fantastic month for planting out, for sowing further seed and also for harvesting so there's so much to see so let's go on a tour and have a look around. So we're going to start off in the corner of my allotment next to my shed and if I just pan around just to show you the whole allotment before we start, you can see my polyhouse just in the corner over on the far side, right the way through to the raspberries and then coming back to where we're going to start. So let's start off in this bed over here. Now as you can see here the lettuce are doing fantastically well. There's four varieties of lettuce here and I've just started harvesting these. The ones nearest the camera are Lola Rossa, then we have Little Gem, then Lakeland and then the ones on the far side are all the year round. Now as I've posted previous videos I often get comments about how come your lettuce are not attacked by slugs and I, the honest answer is I really don't know but as you can see there's very little damage on the lettuce which you think will be a prime crop for slugs. Now there is a slug problem on the other side of my allotment which I'll talk about when we get over there but the lettuce are looking great. I have got some more lettuce inside my poly house which follow on from these and I've just planted some seeds yesterday to follow them. So with lettuce at this time of year you want to be sowing round about every three to four weeks to get that constant supply. Now next to the lettuce I have my cucumbers and they're growing well as well. These are a variety called Market More 76 and you can see that with my cucumbers I train them up canes in the same way that a lot of people do with beans. So when these start to accelerate in growth, they'll start to throw off a lot of different strands and they'll be tied to the canes and I'll probably have to introduce a few more canes in the middle and on the sides. So I had 10 cucumbers in all which I planted out and one of them didn't grow which is the one right in the middle nearest the camera. So yesterday I didn't want to waste the space so I put a few climbing French bean plants in just to fill the gap. And then we move beyond the cucumbers, we have a sowing here of spring onions and beetroots. So they're growing really well now as well. The spring onions are a variety called Ishikura, which I'm growing for the first time. And the beetroot are a variety called Manetta, which I'm also growing for the first time. But because I like beetroots, you'll see when we get to the polyhouse that I have got another sowing of these in to give me a later crop. So now we're going to move on to the next bed along, past the beetroot. And here we have my leeks. They were planted out about a week ago. When I planted them I used a dibber to create a hole and put the leeks inside but didn't fill the holes in. And that's the correct way to plant leeks outside so that as they grow there's less restriction from the soil and it should make them thicker and bigger. These are a variety called autumn mammoth. There are two sowings here which is why you can see some of them are slightly smaller. So the ones on the left hand side are just that little bit smaller than the ones on the right hand side. It's because they were planted about three weeks later, so a little bit behind, but they'll soon catch up. So right next to the leeks are my sweet corn, which I planted out yesterday. I think the ones on the far side I've planted out too close together. Uh, that's because of miscalculation. I thought I'd only have germinated five and made space for five, and then I noticed there was a little one at the end. So what I think I'm going to do is take out the last but one and transplant that to give them more space. I have had a bit of a problem this year for some reason germinating the sweet corn. So yesterday I planted another half a dozen inside my poly house just to give me a later crop. These are a variety called Incredible F1. So the area of ground next to the sweet corn is empty at the moment and that needs to be partly dug and that's where I'm going to put my dwarf French beans which will be planted inside to start over the next few days. I have a courgette plant here which have been a little bit slow but they always are when you first transplant them. But there is a little courgette on there and there are flower buds in there which will create more courgettes. But when these start to grow they grow quite fast. And here we have one butternut squash plant. Again looking a little bit yellow actually the leaves on those. I might need to give that a little bit more water. But I have got more squash and more courgettes in the poly house which you'll see in a minute. For the next bed along we've got broad beans and these now are nearly ready for harvest. These are a variety called Valenciana which I planted in October last year. So these have been in all through the winter period and as you can see there's a huge amount of broad beans almost ready to harvest. I reckon they're about a week away from being harvested. So I'm really pleased with them. First time I've grown Valenciana. I have in the past grown 
a variety called Bunyard Exhibition, which I've always done very well with, but I thought I'd try a bit of an experiment this year, and I'm really pleased I have. When your broad beans get to about, around about four and a half to five feet high, you want to take the growing tops out of them, nip them out with your fingers, because otherwise it encourages black fly, which you can see here. Now, from my experience, black fly is pretty much unavoidable with beans, so don't be alarmed if you do get black fly, because it doesn't really do any harm to the broad beans themselves. It just maybe stunts the growth a little bit of the plants. So if you nip the growing tops out, it just helps to lower the possibility of black fly. I don't think you'll completely avoid it. On the other side of the broad beans, I have two varieties of onions. Now, these are onions that were grown from seed. The variety nearest the broad beans are called Kelsey, and the ones that are nearest the camera are called Exhibition. They just need a bit of weeding, but they're looking okay. And don't be too alarmed if your onions are flopping over just a little bit, because they will soon recover. And at the end of this bed here, I've got eight tomatoes. These are an outdoor bush variety of tomatoes called Mamande. They were transplanted about a week or so ago, and like many vegetables, they will take a little bit of time to adjust to the outside conditions. So even though some of them, particularly the ones on the left-hand side, are looking a little bit lifeless and limp at the moment, I'm hoping that they should recover. I have got a tomato feed ready for these when they start to develop their first trusses, and that's something I'll add to the watering to give them a bit of a boost. And just in front of the broad beans, you'll notice a pallet collar, and that's going to be a raised bed. Next to that, I've got a few what I call legacy spring onions, which have been in an awful long time, and they need to be taken out soon. They've been in for many, many months, and I have got now later varieties of spring onions that I'm starting to harvest. And over here, in the far corner of my allotment, I've got my herb bed. Then we come to this bed over here on the far hand side, which looks a little bit empty at the moment. But there is, however, quite a lot going on. Yesterday, I planted some climbing French bean seeds directly into the ground, just where you can see the bottom of the metal support frame. What you'll also notice that I've done, I've added some netting protection just in front of them. And the reason for that is because in this area of the allotment, there's some trees that are just behind me as I'm filming, and there's a lot of bird activity. And a few weeks ago, I planted out some French beans that I'd started off in my poly house and forgot to net them. And then I came back the following day and they were just stalks. Now, because birds like young, tender bean plants, I've decided to put a bit of bird netting and protect them, which should hopefully do the job. Now, just behind where I've planted the French beans, you have my sunflowers. Now, you can see two of them are doing very well. This one here, which is the second one along, and the end one's not doing too bad. But if you look at this first one here, it's been almost completely eaten. I have left it in more in hope than expectation to see if it will it will recover, but the same's happened to the other one as well. Why this one hasn't been attacked, I don't know, but I'm thankful for. And you can see that it is slug damaged because then if you can see on top of the plant there, you can just see the silver trails that are left behind by slugs. Always amazes me, you know, how high slugs will find their way up a plant or other things just to get to vegetable plants. Yesterday, I planted another dozen sunflowers in pots in my poly house, and hopefully that will give me a later display of uh, sunflowers. So I've just moved to the other side of the sunflowers, and as you can see, that's where the French beans are just at the back. And then we have here my peas and monge too. The ones on this side of the metal support were planted directly into the ground about three weeks ago. And if I'm honest, I was really concerned about planting them on the basis of what happened to the French beans. But as you can see, they've germinated really well. These are a variety called Calvadon Wonder. So I think I'm gonna get a decent supply of those. With these, with peas and monge twos, as they grow bigger, they will find their own way up the metal support. I mean, a lot of you may not have metal support like I've got here, but bamboo canes, similar to the ones I've shown you with the cucumbers, will be absolutely fine. The larger ones you can see, were the ones that I germinated in my video earlier in the year, showing you how to germinate seeds using the paper towel method. So these are a number of weeks in advance of the ones you can see below them. This area of land that's empty here, as you can see between the sunflowers and the beans, I'm gonna use for my winter brassicas. So we'll see when we go into the poly house. I have planted some cabbages and some cauliflowers and sprouts ready for the winter, this will be the place that they're gonna go. And if we move around, we'll see two lots of brassicas. 
The first one is Swede. This is a variety called Helena, which I grew last year. And as you can see, they're completely netted. And it's just as well they are netted because if we look closely at the far side of the bed, we'll see that they've been attacked by slugs. The ones over this side don't seem to have been attacked so badly. And now I have got another sowing of these seeds, which I planted about a week ago. So even if some of these are attacked, I will have spares later in the year. And that's what sometimes vegetable growing is all about. It is a bit disheartening when you lose veg or you see it being attacked. If you've got a plan in place to replace them and then try and put other measures in place to stop them being eaten, like netting and other deterrents, then that'll help you to get a good crop of your favorite vegetables. And then if we move behind the Swedes to the other netted area, this is where all my brassicas are, and these are doing remarkably well. There are minor signs of slug attack in here, but here we have cabbages. There's two varieties of cabbage, golden acre and greyhound. I've got sprouts in here, which are doing very well. They're a variety called Brendan F1. And at the far corner, I have a row of kale. Now, if you watch my channel, you'll know from many previous videos, it's really important that you protect brassicas because everything seems to like them. So this scaffold or debris netting is reasonably good. It's not perfect because as you can see, there's still signs of attack even under the netting, but it does make a difference. Now, there is a video on my channel showing you how to create this bamboo frame just using discarded water bottles and bamboo canes and just the netting. So I'll put a link to that in the comments below. So check that out if you want to try and do the same thing. But overall, I'm really pleased with the brassicas. because I think they're doing ever so well. And I think I'm going to get a harvest of these. Now on this side here, you can see the kale and just behind there, the Brussels sprouts, which look fantastically healthy. And you'll notice just in front of the brassica cage, I've got some mint. Now I did grow an awful lot of mint previously, but when I built the poly house, which I'm standing right in the entrance of now, a lot of the mint was removed because it was planted exactly where the poly house is. So I did keep a little bit of it and this is growing really well. Now right next to the brassicas, I have a bed of mainly onion sets and garlic and they're nearly ready for harvesting. But nearest to the camera, I've got a few shallots which are interspersed with more beetroot. Not all of the shallots germinated, so I planted beetroot in the gaps just to utilize the space. The onion sets are a couple of weeks away from being ready for harvest. And in that time, they'll bulb up a little bit more. A little bit disappointed, if I'm honest, with the onion sets. And I think next year, I may just stick to onion seeds. It's just that onion sets are so easy. You buy them, you plant them, and you leave them. But they can do something like this, which is where they can start to go to seed. You can see the top of the head of the onion set there. And that means the onion now is ready for picking. So the two varieties I have planted, one called Shensui, which is the white onion nearest the camera, and then just behind there, there's a, a number of red onions, which are called Red Baron. It's hard to tell how big the onions are really, because I thought I had really poor onions last year, but when I dug them up, the onions underneath were quite large. So I'm hoping for the same again. What I am pleased with though, is this, which is my garlic. This is a variety called Solan White, and it's about two weeks away from being ready to harvest. And, and the fact now that the leaves are starting to rust or go yellow is perfectly natural for this time of year when they're just about to be harvest. I'm gonna give them two weeks and I think I am gonna get a really good crop of garlic this year. Next, you'll notice there's two large bays of strawberries, all netted and protected. Now there are plenty of videos on my channel showing you how to grow strawberries, talks about, talking about my three year rotation plan and also how to net and protect strawberries. There are also one or two recipe ideas as well, showing you how to use strawberries. So definitely check out the previous videos on the channel. I'll put one or two links to some of those videos in the comments just below this video. Now they're starting to ripen up and I've already had a few strawberries and I'm gonna pick a few more today. You can see they're lovely and ripe. And these are beautiful strawberries. I often get asked what variety of strawberries are they? And the, the answer is I don't know. When I first got the vegetable plot around about eight years ago, I went and purchased half a dozen strawberry plants from a garden center. And all these plants you see here, I've taken off those original six plants, but I don't remember the variety. All I can tell you is the strawberries are nice and large and really tasty. The strawberries in the bay on the far side are a little bit smaller and that's because of my three year rotation plan. So those will be the plants that will produce most of the strawberries for next year. So those are the new plants off the runners of this year's plants. So I am going to get a few strawberries off them, but you generally don't get a great deal of strawberries in their first year. 
second year, they'll be fantastic. And right at the back of the allotment, I have my soft fruit area, which is rhubarb. And I've had two fantastic pickings already of rhubarb, and that's probably because of the amount of plants I've got. There's 11 or 12 altogether. And there are gonna be at least another one that I'll take. And I've got a freezer full of rhubarb, ginger, and orange crumbles, which are absolutely fabulous. This needs to be tidied up today. I wanted to film this before I tidied up, just to show you that vegetable plots do have weeds, despite some of the other tours that you might see, which appear to have no weeds at all. You'll find lots on my vegetable plot. But my plan today is to de-weed this area after I finish filming today. Now the secret with rhubarb to make it successful is when you're watering, water right down below the leaves directly into the bottom of the stalks with the top of the watering can taken off. And just at the back of the rhubarb, I have two blueberry bushes. You can see they're starting to develop some blueberries on them now. Quite small actually at the moment. Another bush just here. And then raspberries. Now the raspberries should be ready to start fruiting in the next couple of weeks. So as always, I'm pretty confident I'm going to get a really good supply of raspberries again because I have them for the last half a dozen years. And then right next to the rhubarb and the raspberries are my experimental no-dig potatoes. These are the ones covered in the dried grass. I did do a video showing you how I planted these and this is my first attempt at doing no-dig potatoes. These are a variety of first earlies called Swift. And I think I'm going to get a mixed review on this. I don't know for certain yet because there was two rows of these potatoes planted. The ones on the left hand side haven't done so well, the ones nearest the raspberries. I think that's partly my fault. I don't think I put enough grass clippings on them, whereas the ones on the right hand side all appear to be growing. But I will do a video when I harvest these just to show you how I get on. And just to the left of those are the traditionally planted potatoes, which are a variety of Maris Piper and the Zeros. So these are main crop potatoes, so these won't be ready for harvesting probably till at least the end of August. And of course, I couldn't complete a tour without going inside the poly house. And this is one of my favorite places on the plot. This was only built last year and it's made such a difference in the way that I've been able to grow things because of this particular facility. I'm really pleased with it. I have got some raised beds in the middle which are mainly filled with my own homemade compost and uh, in there you can see lettuce. These are the lettuce that will follow on from the ones that you saw at the beginning of the video outside. Again, same varieties, Little Gem, All the Year Round, Lakeland and Lola Rossa. They're doing great. Bit of slug attack here. You can see the ones in the corner have been eaten by slugs and that is one of the issues with raised beds. And next to those, I've got my next lot of spring or salad onions and a few interspersings of lettuce and so an earlier sowing of spring onions which will be ready to harvest. And these are beautiful. These are a variety called ramrod and we've had been having these over the last couple of weeks and they are really tasty. Something I'm not doing too well with is my tomatoes. Got to give them some feed I think. Uh, they've gone a little bit yellow on the leaves and they're, looking, they're not looking good at all. So I might need to transplant those actually. Maybe it could be the grow bags. Uh, there's not an awful lot of soil in those grow bags, but they are disappointing at the moment, so I'll see what I can do with them. Then at the back, I have some lettuce, which, which are, these are little gems, and these are ones that haven't been harvested, and you can see they're growing quite tall. So what I tend to do with those, I will harvest them and cut the tops and the bottoms of them and have the middle, because the middle leaves will still be nice and fresh. And these tall plants here are celery. And these are going to seed now. These are last year's celery, actually. These are the ones I found outside, that I planted outside last year, and transplanted them in here to see if they would grow, and they clearly have. So I could get some celery off the central stems, which I might use, but my plan is I'm not gonna grow them for seed because celery seed is quite easy to, uh, to buy and reasonably cheap, and I can easily use this space more efficiently to grow other veg. Just under the shelves, I'm, I'm experimenting with so another variety of seed-planted onions, and these are Buckinghamshire Champion. They're looking quite healthy, so we'll see how they get on. And then next to them, we've got my celery. These are a variety called Octavius F1. Then we come onto the shelves, and this is the planting area. You can see the peppers, which I've transplanted about a week ago into slightly bigger pots. These are a variety of hot chilli peppers called Gusto F1. And 
Then next to them are some Carolina Reapers, which are growing really slow. So I'm wondering whether I'm actually going to get any peppers off them this year, but we'll see. And yesterday I planted some sweet corn, just yesterday in here. And next to those I've got some herbs. The first two pots have basil in them. The tall one at the back is parsley, which I need to cut down. And then I've got coriander, all these grown from seed. And next to those I've got a load of flowers and I've done fantastic for flowers this year uh, of all different varieties. These are the ones that have not been planted out yet. You can see coleus which I absolutely love which are those purpley green leaves at the back. Uh, Nicolatia which are the ones next to them also at the back. A variety of flowers called catenache which are going to be going into my garden very soon and a couple of trays of sweet william here and some night scented stock. And then I've got some more veg that I planted three days ago, and these have germinated already actually. But at the back, I've got spring onions, two varieties of spring onions, Ishikura and White Lisbon. Then I've got some more beetroot, which have also germinated. They are a combination of Pablo F1 and Moneta. Then I've got my next lot of lettuce, which are just starting to germinate, four varieties in there. And then my winter brassicas, which I've got two varieties of cabbage, some swede and some kale. And here, about a week and a half ago, I planted some courgette seeds and they've already germinated and are starting to grow. These are a variety called Black Beauty. And I'm really pleased to see my squash have germinated. Butternut squash, this is a variety called Butterfly F1. That one's germinated. That one is just appearing through the soil. And I'm just waiting for these two here. Also yesterday I transplanted all of these here which are petunias. And I've worked out there's about 120 there. These are the second lot of petunias that I've grown. And my garden is absolutely full of them. And they're absolutely beautiful. So I'll give them a water today. And then these are the sunflowers I was talking about which I've planted and this is a variety of flowers called Coriopis, where I only planted a few, but two of them have germinated, so I'll put those in pots. So as you can see, there's still plenty going on in the poly house. I've got veg growing and flowers, I've got new seeds in, and I've got you know things like lettuce and spring onions that uh, are doing really well. So I hope you've enjoyed that tour. I've really enjoyed showing you around, and as you can see, there's so much going on just outside but also inside my poly house I really wanted to film this before I started weeding because in my opinion it's really important with videos of this nature to see the vegetable plots do have weeds and they can be and are untidy and it's all things that we all need to deal with but I now I'm going to go and deal with some of those weeds and get them up and make some of the areas a little bit more tidy I do hope you've enjoyed this video and it'd be really fantastic to know what you're growing in June and how you're getting on are you growing the same types of things as me or have you got other things that you've got in that might be good suggestions for others? Pop them in the comments below, it'd be great to hear from you and great to share these types of ideas. Well thank you very much for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed the video and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see future videos on how to sow and grow fruit and veg and flowers and one or two recipe ideas, don't forget to press the subscribe button. And I'll see you all on the next video.